Hello, welcome everyone. My name is Elizabeth Bowman and I work for LSA Technology Services as a learning and teaching consultant. Um, today I'm going to talk to you about successful creative assignments. Um, what I've done here, instead of having slides, is I've created a Canvas course. And in this course, um, I've compiled um, a curated uh, group of resources that you can access at any time. Um, by going into the course, you can copy these into your own courses, um, cut and paste things, um, adjust them for your own needs. Uh, essentially, what I've done is, is taken some of the best assignments and rubrics that I've seen um, at the institution and through some of the vendors that we have, like Adobe, and I put them here for your um for your resource as you know as you go and develop your courses and you're thinking about using different kinds of creative assignments i've included some rubrics here and examples of um, different kinds of assignments so including in that um i have a number of um calendars um, that allow you to sort of paste the uh, parts of the assignment um, help keep students on track. So um, I'm joined today by my colleague, Terry Horton. Um, she is moderating today. And um, you see here, I've taken this slide format and put this into Canvas. I just want to show you for a minute. Um, you can add, edit Canvas, um, make it a little bit more colorful. I've gone in and added this little bar here at the top. Um, you can do that um, when you're editing your pages inside of Canvas. So this is an edited Canvas page. I have presented another session um, on changing the uh, HTML in Canvas. If you want to customize it a little bit, you can see that in our, our list of uh, sessions. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Well, the first example here is an infographic from... Um, with data from multiple disciplines, there's a video here that I've included that's really helpful. Um, you can show this to your students. Um, this is using Adobe Express, and um, we are very fortunate at the U of M to have a full license of all of the Adobe products. And um, I've included some of their resources in here. They have a, uh, a series in Adobe. Um, it is the uh, for faculty. It's called the Adobe Faculty Development Institute. And um, you can take free courses there, um, go through their sessions, and learn a little bit more about their recommended creative assignments. Um, one of the things that I've included here is coming up next. And that's to um, use this particular um, aid to help you set up your... Uh, your um, creative assignment. So you can make copies of this. Um, there's student-facing instructions and there's um, links to the resources that they recommend, including a TED's talk that talks a little bit about infographics. Um, you know, having this scaffolding is really helpful when you're kind of trying to come up with a, um, a new way to um, get your students engaged with your content. So this doesn't necessarily have to be in any particular discipline. Um, and it allows you to sort of get a view of how, how long some of these activities might take and whether or not you want to do them during class time or do you want to um, have students doing them outside of class time. So these are very helpful resources. And, um, you know, I tell faculty that Adobe, um, their higher education design folks are faculty just like you who have taken the time to sort of structure everything and make it available for others. Um, and so if you can kind of get past Adobe's continual commercials for their products. Um, there's some really nice resources available at their um, higher education design website. So I've included two of those for, for this particular assignment. Now here's the uh, infographic with data from multiple disciplines. Um, and so this is a really comprehensive assignment, but it gives students an opportunity to visualize data. Um, it's becoming more and more important in almost every discipline to 
um, to understand a little bit about data science, how data is gathered, where to get good sources of data, and how to visualize that in a comprehensive way. So it doesn't matter what discipline you're in. This is a really important skill to have. Um, students really appreciate the opportunity to create something that they can share with others, um, with their parents, with their peers, um, put on their website. Um, when you do these kind of assignments, it gives students an opportunity to show others the kind of work they're doing um, in their classes, and it, it really helps engage them. Okay, so the next example I have in here is actually a story maps project. And um, I won't belabor all the details here, but um, this is an example from a, a faculty member who has taken the time to develop um, a basically a rubric of what they're expecting, some due dates. You can see there's steps here, asking the students to perform a certain number of activities within a certain time span, which is really important. Gives students plenty of time to pace out all the different elements of the project. And um, it's very important also um, to practice good uh, information literacy and, and make sure that students are getting their information from reliable sources. And it's a good idea to include um, some sources in there for them and to help them better uh, parse out this information and um, use their critical thinking skills to make sure that they're getting the information that they need. So next example here. Is a, this is a faculty member's collection of their student projects. Um, in Story Maps, you can collect uh, students' projects and put them in a main website. Um, in this example, um, what we're looking at is a, uh, is a uh, website that has a multiple websites linked into it. So essentially, Story Maps builds a website. It's got a little bit of different format than what most people are familiar with. Um, instead of having a lot of navigation, generally speaking, it's more linear. It's more like a long article that scrolls. And, um, you know, it's like a story you might see in the New York Times. So Story Maps is a very powerful tool, and we're also very fortunate to have that um, uh, generating um, a lot of interest around campus with people using this for um different projects. And one of the pieces of Story Maps that's really elemental is it's linked to ArcGIS maps. And there's an enormous number of maps that students can use in their projects. It's quite simple to generate uh, a map on their own um, with some data points in it. It gets a little bit more involved when they start to integrate uh, more robust data, but uh, many times they can search in the maps um, area of story maps and bring up a map that's relevant to their topic and include that in their story. Um, and so it's more linear, less less like other websites where you have a bunch of buttons and things. Um, so these are great for um, final projects and uh, story maps is often used to um, present to other students um, some of the research that students have been doing in class. Here's another example. Um, this is just an individual story map. This one has a little bit more robust navigation in it. See, it does have some links um, that can allow you to sort of go through the different um, topics. Um, but it still has that scrolling format that's more like a story where you have lots of text and images together. Um, and here we have a, another example of a really nice map. Um, with the style, what uh, Story Maps presents here is something called a sidecar, where we have the text and the map together. And these are quite simple to do for students, and it's a very uh, attainable project in one semester. So here's a peer review example for a story map. So it can be quite a, uh, a lot of work for a faculty member to go through all of the websites if they have a you know good sized class. Um, so we've included here some questions that um, you might want to ask your students to um, to look at when they're doing a peer review. Uh, it's a great way to sort of 
encourage students to see other students work and also um, to help them sort of get the perspective to assess their own work in a different way. So you can borrow these if you need. I've actually put this in the format of a discussion um, so students can discuss. I used the peer review tool inside of Canvas. I can show you where that is just in case you've never used it. Um, okay, so next. So here's a rubric for grading story map. Now this is more about the visual hierarchy and, and some of how it looks. We've got um, a section for map elements, labels, and um, in this case we're concerned about cart cartographic convention. Obviously you could take this out if it wasn't an important element in your topic. Um, you can always include in this rubric um, uh, a percentage for um, for the research part, making sure that they're um, including their prof proper references and um, using reliable sources for their information. Okay, next up is another website tool that we use here at the university. This is WordPress for students. Um, we have WordPress for uh, departments and um, you can found a WordPress site collectively for an entire class or for an individual project. Now WordPress is a little bit more robust than, than Story Maps and uh, has a little bit of a learning curve. Um, it can be a challenge to get the students added to the site, but we're always happy to help you. You can contact us and start a ticket if you want to use WordPress. Um, we find that WordPress is used more often for larger projects that span multiple academic semesters. Um, we see faculty doing long-term research projects over multiple semesters, and they're more likely to use WordPress. Um, so it is designed originally as a blog, and so it's an excellent uh, tool for blogging. And um, I'm going to go ahead and show you an example of what that looks like. So here's a final pro portfolio. So this is this is a WordPress site that every semester that this class is taught, the students are added to the um, WordPress site and contribute to um, to the whole site as um, as they did in the previous semester. So it's it's quite a compilation of a lot of different students' works, not just one semester's worth. <clears throat> and same thing we saw before. We've got a calendar of deadlines. So we keep the students on track with um, intermittent uh, drafts and um, turning in their thesis. Um, and then we have a very uh, detailed information about the structure of what their site should look like. We actually provide the structure with the tabs for navigation in the template so students don't have to create it from scratch. And the requirements, we have videos and hyperlinks and such. And then of course here, the faculty member has given the students resources that they want them to use. Um, and then we have quite a bit of explanation here about the process for building their thesis, their methodology for research, et cetera. So this is a pretty detailed example, but it's really helpful if you wanted to create a, uh, a course um, project like this. Um, it's really helpful to borrow some of the, uh, the structure and the outlining uh, from another course, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. So if this is something that you're interested in trying, you could start out with, um, with this faculty member's um, structure and it will really help you get going with your projects. Okay, next up. Uh, modern Jewish photographer. So this is, this is what this... Um, WordPress site looks like. Um, it has a significant menu. Here's each one of the students from the past with um, all their projects linked. Um, I'm not going to click on any of these because there's quite a bit of nudity and I don't want to offend anybody in the in the session. So I'm just going to show you that you can click on this and look at it on your own um, as I've added you to the uh, Canvas site. 
Okay, so here's another website tool. Now, this is one of my favorites um, for a couple of reasons. One, it's very easy to use. The other one is it's already uh, Google. And as you know, we all are using Google for, um, for the university that store our files and for email and everything. And so when you use Google Sites, um, it allows you to create, create a quick website. Um, but um, it's not quite as pretty as some of the other ones we have, like WordPress and um, Story Maps. It doesn't look quite as slick. However, um, there's some real advantages to Google. And one of the things, Google Sites, and one of the things I wanted to show you uh, was something that uh, is really a nice feature. So this is a website that I created years ago with a colleague of mine. Um, we were building out a collection of images that he had put together in, um, in the library. So um, as you can see here, this is a website. Here we have a number of different links for all of the different countries that these uh, propaganda uh, propaganda from the World War I, uh, where it originally started. So, and if you look here, this is just uh, two folders. So what we're viewing right here are two Google folders that I have linked into the website. And this is a huge benefit of using uh, Google Sites is it's compatible with all of the file structure that you already set up in Google anyway. Um, so it's a very helpful thing. So I'm going to go ahead and um, demonstrate what this looks like if I want to. Um, oops, it just sent me back to the to the website there. So I'm going to just grab this. It will let me. So when you create these these folders inside of can um, inside of Google Sites, um, what it does is it allows you to edit these. So what I just did is I just changed this. So let me show you once again. Um, when you when you use this tool right here, um, it allows you to change the settings from list view to grid view. So in many cases, when you're doing something like this in WordPress or in Story Maps, what you end up having to do is create thumbnail images for your website that allow you to view um, you know, a larger file. But if you're using Google Sites, this tool is actually native in Google Sites. So all you have to do is edit the settings in the uh, Google Drive folder from uh, from list view, which looks pretty much like the list that you would see in, in uh, Google Drive, to grid view. And once you do that, um, you have these individual uh, folder views, and then you can click directly through when you're viewing the site, which I'm going to go ahead and publish the site. And uh, once you do that, um, this is the old view, see that's the list view, and here's my new view with the uh, actual images in here. So if you're asking your students, and there I go ahead, click on the image and it pops right up. Well, this is all done from a website. So you can control the view. Um, you publish the website and have uh, allow people to, um, in the public to see it, or you can restrict the view as we're very familiar to, in doing, just like we would do with Google uh, Drive or any of the other Google tools, the permissioning is the same. So you can control the uh, permissions for this particular website uh, based on the same features that you would have if you were sharing a folder in Google Drive. It's a very advantageous uh, tool. So I highly recommend Google Sites if you want your students maybe to compile a lot of images together or if you're using a large amount of other kinds of data, um, you can put in Google Drive, link it to the, to the site, and then control who can and cannot see it. So here's the instructions for Google Sites. Oh, I guess this link is no longer any good. I have to take that out. All right, so next up, we're moving along to podcasting. 
podcasting is very popular with students. Many of them do it um, on their own as a, as a hobby or as an interest group. Um, and we're very fortunate to use um, Google, I'm sorry, Adobe Rush. Uh, Adobe Rush is a very simple tool um, that you can use to create uh, quick podcasts. And here we have the assignment for the Michigan Voices podcast. So we've got the same thing we saw before in scaffolding, uh, rolling due dates, uh, explanation of the point system, um, how the st students are to create their podcast, and um, even details on how they upload their podcast to the website. So I'm going to show you now what this looks like. Um, this is the Michigan Voices uh, site. And um, there are a number of interviews and podcasts inside the site here. Um, and this is an a ongoing project over multiple semesters. Um, students record their podcasts and upload them to the site here as part of a collective research project. Um, and uh, and that's what that looks like. Okay. So here's the assignment itself, um, record a field research project. Um, so this is a little bit less of a description, but there's a full list lesson here that you can click on that will explain in detail the steps for doing the field research project. Um, and here is a link to um, how to record the research project. Um, and this is one of many of Adobe's, um, I'm gonna click on it and see if it'll take us there. Yeah, so here's the information on how to do that. And Adobe has some really excellent tutorials that help students work through how to use their software. Uh, so you don't necessarily, as a faculty member, have to know how to use the tool, but it, it does help. So here's the full lesson plan for this particular project, which you can download. Um, same format, uh, how much time it takes to do different elements of the project, uh, steps, a rubric, um, examples, and everything at the uh, Adobe Education Exchange website. So... Okay, so here's the more robust information. Um, this is from FTVM. So this is the film, television, and media folks. A little bit more robust explanation, a little bit more technical information, but if you are interested in having your students get more involved, there's even some limits here on the web, uh, on the uh, file size. Um, and you have this as a template to use as well. And I've included in here a couple examples of some audiovisual essays, just so you can take a look at them. I'm not going to play any of them in this particular presentation, but if you want to take a look and see what this looks like, these are actually published in Canvas, um, which makes them available to not everyone, but just uh, individuals at the university. Okay, so one of the tools that I sort of touched on at the beginning when we were talking about infographics was this, which is a, a Adobe Express. So Adobe Express is a very simple application that students can use. It operates on the web. You don't have to download any um, any software. Um, it's, it's free for all of us. Um, and uh, oops, I kind of clicked ahead quickly. So if you want to uh, try this out on your own, you're welcome to log in, take a take a look at uh, you know create art for slides. Um, there's some features in here that allow for generative uh, artificial intelligence. Um, some really exciting things going on with Adobe right now. We're fortunate that we have um, all of that available to us through the university. Now the final. Um, the application that I want to demonstrate here is something called Pictochart. And uh, my, my license is expired. So. All right. So once again, I'm going to go back here and show you the format of this particular site. 
I've set up all these resources inside of Canvas for you to access at your um, at your leisure. After the presentation is over, I will go ahead and add anyone who requests after the fact that they want to access to these uh, curated resources. I'll add you to the site. You can go in and peruse around it um, if you have time for that. You can also copy. Um, download and keep any of these uh, pieces and parts for your own assignments in your own Canvas course. Well, thank you very much for joining me today. Um, and I appreciate your time and attention. Thanks a lot.